distinguished ladies and gentlemen. When I w was contacted first by TEDx, the first question I asked was, let me, I, I, I need to be intimated on what TEDx means. So Emmanuel was there, he took me through, he explained to me uh, what we mean by TEDx. Now, he now gave me the liberty of choosing my own topic that I can discuss and share ideas with you. Because ours here is to share ideas, interact, and understand the topic in question. Not just to communicate to you like a teacher people relationship. No, we don't do that. The modern trend is sharing of ideas. So I said, okay, if that is the case, I will want to choose technology transfer, industry and academic needs. So it's the topic I chose by myself and I communicated to him, they accepted. And I said, okay, when I come, we'll discuss this issue, we'll interact, we'll understand the topic better with you. Now, the key topic here is technology transfer. Why do we need to transfer technology? We, we all know that technology is as old as man. Technology, whether modern or local. In your own opinion, why do you think we need to transfer technology? Okay, let me give you an example. Before you now pick it up and tell me why you think we need to transfer technology. Now, let, let us take an example of our local cottage industries. Like the local tie and dye we have, you know, you know that, tie and dye. Uh, for example, the, the, the Jubo Marina local industry, you know, where they, they dye this, uh, what, what, what do you call it, wagambali or shadda or, what, or any, of, any, any plain material that needs to take a shape or color. Hmm? In fact, it's a local technology, it's a local industry, sorry. They use their own local technology to produce local or locally produced materials. But then along the line, you find that many people that come to Sokoto buy this tie and dye and take them somewhere else, even abroad. And then in that, in, in that respect, they, the, the people that buy this local tie and dye, they go and refine and reshape improve and develop over and above this tie and die. So this is what we mean. It is just a simple example of technology transfer from local to probably sophisticated or upgraded level of position. In other words, you find that in technology transfer, we have two types of transfers. Transfer from within that is from one locality to the other. It may be from within. Like if I have my own shedda or I have my own wagambari, I take it to Jubo Marina uh, industry, dying industry, he will, he, 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 he will refine it and then send it back to We are operating under the same locality. So it is technology transfer from within hmm? because Already, the shed there I have, the wagambari is also a product of another technology. Now I'm taking it back to Jubo uh, industry for another form of technology. Now he, he, he refines it and sends it back to me. So it is technology transfer from within. And we also decide to sell this to other people. They may, uh, they may be in Sokoto, they may be in Abuja, they may be in Kaduna, they may also be abroad, somewhere else, either in London or America or any other uh, country. So in that case, it becomes external transfer. Another form of, or example of technology transfer is 
this local kilishi, you know, you know the local kilishi. So when we talk of kilishi, we are talking of food technology. Hmm? Initially, in those olden days, the conventional kilishi you know, is the normal kilishi, whereby a normal kilishi producer uh, dries his meat, applies the local kuli kuli and other uh, uh, other ingredients or spices, so that it, it will have a, a special aroma. At all, if you want to buy, you just go and buy it as it is. Now, a second, a completely different dimension. You go to uh, what do you call it? Chagalungu kilishi. You have you will now see a completely different and refined kilishi. In terms of impact, it is packaged. It has NAVDAC number, it has lifespan, and it is being exported. That is sophisticated technology. This, this, this kilishi, can take it, it can, it can span up to two, three, four years. It does not matter, it will not spoil because of the process it has, it has undergone. So that is uh, external or imported or external technology. You produce it locally, but you export it somewhere else. So these are examples of technologies. Technologies from within and technologies from outside. From one country, from one locality to another locality, from one state to another state, from one state to another, can, uh, 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 another state or even country. Now, in this case, sometimes I may be to give my examples from school situations because that, that, that is where I belong to, the education. Now, in our office, we have our, our production workshop in our technical colleges or schools or institutions whereby we have installed <coughs> machines. These machines sometimes are sophisticated highly sophisticated, they are of international standard. Then we have teachers who are professionally trained to take our students through, to explain to them, to teach them, and also to expose them to practical situations, whereby they, in practical terms, they test or apply theory into practice. The another thing is that sometimes our students in the polytechnic we bear me, Dr. Venlo, business. I exposed to practical attachments. After some years of experience, they are sent to companies or industries or organization, production uh, companies, so that they can also be there as attaches for practical attachments. They learn more and more in practical terms. What they have learned in school, they are now here in production places so that they can also apply knowledge into practice. That is technology transfer. And that is an example of academic links. Technology transfer, industries and academic links. From technology to uh, 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 our production units, and also you take these students back to the industries for practical experiences. Sometimes when the students perform wonderfully well, you find that they are absorbed by these industries or manufacturing companies. And then eventually, they also become experts. They serve as experts, and then also in the course of time, they become authorities in their own way. In the course of time, they produce more and more, they invent more and more, they initiate more and more. So what they invent, what they produce, they test this product, uh, uh, product, they develop them, they improve them, then they translate them into practice. So that is another form of uh, development or improved technology. So there is linkage between technology, there is linkage between school 
and there is linkage between industries. So you find that most of the experts we have in the industries or in production companies or factories, most of them are or were one time students, maybe in the universities, in the polytechnics, in the colleges, higher colleges, where they have gone through some form of technical or technological training. Now they are back to the companies or factories where they are supposed to be. So another example of linkage or links between technology, the school, and the industries. Now, uh, in a nutshell, when we talk of technology transfer, industry and, technology, uh, and uh, uh, academicness, we should also imagine, we should also ask ourselves, what are the expected outcome? The expected outcome of technology transfer. The expected, uh, expected outcome or expected results include improvement in standard. Number two, rapport and linkages will be established. Number three, we have new ideas also coming up. More and more ideas coming up. Number five, we have job opportunities created or increased. Number six, we have more challenges created. And then also fresh ideas emanate. Because as we bring in inventors or innovators, we find that along the line, through testing and development, improvement, we have fresh ideas. We have many more things coming up. Then we have linkages being created. So you find that if a student is attached to a particular production company, automatically, if that student is the brilliant type of student, automatically he is being engaged automatically in that manufacturing uh, company or factory. So that is linkages, establishment of links. Then, uh, like I have said, we also need to remind ourselves more and more of the local uh, technologies we have because that is our area of concern and that is why and how especially as our teaming audience here at the youth, you should think of more and more of how you should be inventors, how you should innovate, how you should come with useful and practical ideas, so that at the end of it, you establish your own uh, local industries or cottage industries, and then through testing and improvement and development, along the line, you become an authority the, uh, nowadays, things are not easy to come by. So it is high time always uh, uh, the youth should always think of how to develop themselves, how to improve over and above, how to initiate or create job opportunities for themselves. Don't just rely on government work. In most cases, it's not fair. What is more important is how do you engage yourself? How do you initiate ideas that will bring about development not only to you as a personality or as a person, but to your own community, to your own society, to your state, to your home based uh, reality? How do you do that? Just go back home, think of how to come up with fresh and useful ideas. So that at the end of it, you also establish you are served as an authority. You become a job creator. You engage other youth like you. You have your own local companies, your own local industries. At the end of it, before you know it, you are done. Hafsa Dengue is another example here with us. She has her own personal business. She has initiated so many things. She has done it and she is still making it. So why don't you think of doing that? Why don't you also uh, think uh, uh, along the same line and make it a big challenge 
so that at the end of it, even if somebody offers you a job, you say, well, okay, I'm okay, I'm satisfied. I'm also an employer of labor. So that is it. In a nutshell, technology, as we have said, is the scientific way of moving things or making things happen in a way that it will benefit a person, individual group of people organizations, states, the nation, and the international communities. At the same time, how do we transfer technology? We can transfer technology to establishing links, linkages, so that at the end of it, when you hear that something is happening in Jubo Magaza, uh, Mazuga industry, or Jubo Modena industry, or Shagalonku food technology Kilishi, then you also think of what do I do also to contribute to bring in change in my own locality, in my own society, in my own state. That is the challenge. So I thank you most sincerely for your attention and I hope this will serve as a challenge and it will go a long way in influencing some positive changes among you especially that are here and other teaming population of IRUs. Thank you most sincerely. <laughs>